This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1269. A short and uncomplicated guide to reverse dieting by Matt McLeod of mattmcleod.org. And I'm Dr. Neil. Hey there, happy Sunday and a very happy Valentine's Day if you're celebrating. And welcome back to Optimal Health Daily, where I simply read to you from the best health and fitness blogs for free. It's kind of like an audiobook, but with articles instead and from a bunch of different authors and always with permission from the sites. On Fridays, I do something a little different. I answer your questions. You can send one in by going to oldpodcast.com slash ask, or you can email your question to health at oldpodcast.com. All right, and with that, let's jump right in and hear today's article and continue optimizing your life. A Short and Uncomplicated Guide to Reverse Dieting by Matt McLeod of mattmcleod.org. Instead of deep diving into every piece of science ever on reverse dieting, metabolism, and a bunch of you don't care about, I'm gonna tell you a story. Let's make up a guy named Chad. Chad's got a pretty fast metabolism, works out a couple times a week, and maintains his weight by eating 2,500 calories per day. These are his maintenance calories. But Chad is trying to get hashtag shredded and wants to lose some body fat. We know to lose fat, he needs to be in a caloric deficit, which means in his case, below 2,500 calories per day. And if you think Chad is gonna be slow and steady with this cutting strategy, you apparently don't know enough dudes named Chad. It's all or nothing, bro. Instead, he decides to aggressively diet by cutting 1,000 calories per day, by eating less food, and adding tons of cardio. Chad could probably do an aggressive cut if he had a coach helping him out, but that is obviously never gonna happen because he's quote-unquote done his research. When Chad does this cut, his body will adapt to the lower energy intake by losing body fat and possibly muscle if he's not eating enough protein and doing resistance training. And his metabolism will slow down, which is normal because the body is trying to preserve as much energy as possible. Fast forward a month and Chad's metabolism has slowed down to maintaining his weight on 1,500 calories per day instead of his initial 2,500 calories. This is just a rough example, by the way. It's been a long month of hardcore dieting, and Chad is sick of this. He wants food, lots of food, because his aggressive dieting has ramped up his hunger. So he starts crushing food each day and eats more than 2,500 calories per day. But his metabolic rate hasn't had time to adjust yet. His maintenance calories are still at 1,500 calories per day, and he's eating at least 2,500 calories per day. This means he's gonna start gaining fat at a very high rate. It's possible he could regain all the fat he lost when dieting for that month-long period, plus even more. This is why people tend to gain even more fat after they've dieted for a long period of time. Think about bodybuilders or actors who dieted for weeks and weeks, finish their competition or movie, and then eat everything in sight. They blow up get sad, start dieting again, and it's a vicious cycle of gaining and losing. But Matt, isn't there a way to prevent people from blowing up after they lose weight and their metabolism slows down? Enter the reverse diet. The reverse diet is exactly what it sounds like. You're doing the opposite of slowly taking away calories to lose weight. Instead, you're slowly adding in calories week to week so that you can match your metabolic rate in parallel as it increases. Yes, this means your metabolism actually gets faster as you eat more food. This is why people get confused when others say eating six small meals a day speeds up your metabolism. Yes, it does, but if you're eating too many calories, you still gain weight. So, here's what Chad should have done. Calculated a calorie deficit, then slowly decreased his calories week to week. Doing it slowly allows you to retain more muscle and doesn't ramp up your hunger he should have reduced his calories by 100 to 200 per week, but these would vary by individual. These calories should be decreased mostly from carbs and fats because we want to keep protein high, around one gram of protein per pound of body weight. He should have aimed for half to 1% loss of total body weight per week. Then, once he reached his desired level of leanness and or his diet ended, he should have started a reverse diet by slowly adding in calories by 100 to 200 calories per week. And again, this will vary by individual. I would recommend adding in calories mostly from carbs and protein to begin, then slowly increase fats as weeks go on. 
I can't give broad recommendations for weight regain because it will be largely dependent on how lean Chad is at the end of his diet and how fast he's willing to gain fat. But typically, one half to 1% is a good start. Using pictures and body measurements are other tools I'd recommend in addition to the scale. Now here's the kicker. Reverse dieting isn't all sunshine and rainbows. It's typically harder than the dieting part because Chad's ready to eat all the food and he's not getting the reward of being shredded anymore. So he better make sure he's mentally prepared for this. And if you haven't caught on by now, I'm also saying you better be mentally prepared when you plan on dieting down and or use reverse dieting. Some people may lose weight when reversing after a long period of dieting due to lower stress, which leads to less water retention. But others may not be so lucky and have to cope with putting on some body fat. I know you're just gonna think I'm plugging here, but if you wanna diet down the right way and not risk screwing up your metabolism, I say that lightly, you should hire a coach. Long story short, don't be a Chad. You just listened to the post titled A Short and Uncomplicated Guide to Reverse Dieting by Matt McLeod of mattmcleod.org. And hey, if you've been putting off doctor's appointments or feel like they're a chore, check out Plush Care. I have it. Plush Care made it super easy to schedule an appointment and see a doctor virtually right through my smartphone or computer. I just pick a time that works for me, book it online, and no need to wait on hold or even leave the house and sit in a crowded waiting room. I can be diagnosed, treated, and even have a prescription sent to my pharmacy of choice if needed within minutes. And Plush Care accepts most major insurance carriers. Plus, they're available in all 50 states. These doctors care and are even available to help if you're having difficulty managing your emotions, especially nice these days. Check them out. It was a lot easier than expected to get started. It only took me a minute. Plush Care makes it easier than ever to take care of yourself, inside and out. Start your membership today. Go to plushcare.com slash OHD to start your free 30-day trial. That's P-L-U-S-H-C-A-R-E dot com slash O-H-D for a free 30-day trial. Plushcare.com slash O-H-D. Dr. Neil here again for my commentary. Slow and steady wins the race, right? That's really the key when it comes to losing fat, gaining muscle, getting that body you've always wanted. It's not gonna happen overnight. And I appreciated that Matt mentioned throughout his article that this is a very individual thing. And so he's trying to give recommendations as best he can, but this is, again, a very individual thing. And so you're gonna need to be really good if you wanna follow this at tracking what you eat, make sure you're monitoring your weight carefully. And I love that he mentioned measurements. Far too often, we use the number on the scale as an end-all, be-all of whether we're meeting our goals. And that's simply inaccurate. The number of the scale doesn't really tell you a whole lot. It tells you, yes, how much your total body weighs, but it doesn't tell you how much muscle you have versus how much fat you may have lost or gained or how much water you're carrying. And so it's always a good idea to get what's called a full body composition done. This is where you get measurements taken around your waist and hips, especially. If you wanna know how large your muscles are getting, you can take measurements around some of those body parts like the arms and the calves and things like that. You also get your body fat analyzed. And so as you put on weight or lose weight, you can see between time one and time two whether you're actually gaining muscle or losing body fat or losing muscle and gaining body fat. So a certified coach or a certified trainer, the keyword being certified, can help you assess these things. If you don't have time to see a coach or a trainer or you can't afford one, the other way you can tell whether you're gaining or losing the quote-unquote right kind of weight is to see how your clothes fit, especially if your pants or shorts start to fit better, particularly around the waist and hips, you're probably doing the right thing. If, however, they're starting to feel snug again, well, you might be putting on some body fat. All right, that wraps up today's episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a subscriber. Thank you for sharing the show with someone. And I'll see you back here tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.